called to order. This work session regular meeting of the Township Council is called to order in accordance with Section 5 of the Open Public Meeting Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975. Be advised that adequate notice of this work session regular meeting of the Township Council of the Township of Franklin, County of Somerset, was made by the posting on the bulletin board at the municipal complex and transmitted to the officially designated newspapers a list of dates annually indicating that this work session regular meeting would take place at the Franklin Township Municipal Complex at 7 p.m. on Tuesday, January 26, at, uh, January 26, 2016. In addition, a copy of this notice has been available to the public and is on file at the office of the municipal clerk. Would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by an invocation by Councilwoman Kimberly Francois. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us take the next few moments of silence to each seek in our own way whatever sources of inspiration will grant us the strength and power in our thoughts and decisions to be for the benefit of all people at all times. May we abide by the rules we have established, those of trust, fellowship, and ethics, and may we place service above self in our daily endeavors, and may we always test ourselves in our efforts to be sure they are the truth, good for all concern, of benefit to mankind, and provide peace and understanding to all. Amen. Thank you. Madam Master Clerk, please call the roll. Deputy Mayor Chase? Here. Councilwoman Francois? Here. Mayor Kramer? Here. Councilman Onijaga? Councilman Prasad? Here. Councilwoman Robinson? Here. Councilwoman Sherman? Here. Councilman Vasanara? Here. Councilman Wright? Thank you. Uh, Councilman Onijaka uh, sent me a text saying he'll be a little late due to car problems. Um, item number five, commendations, proclamations. We have none. The next item is public discussion. Is there a motion to open the meeting for public discussion? So moved. Second. Seconded. Second. Been seconded. Any discussion? This would be the appropriate time if a council member wanted to call on anyone in particular to speak during public session, uh, but seeing no discussion. <laughs> um, um, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Public discussion is open. Anyone wishing to speak, please come up to the mic. Limit to five minutes. No yielding of time. May only speak once. And come on up, Mr. Peraza. Alex Carrazzi, 14 Margaret Drive, Somerset. Good evening. I have two items to, uh, to mention. The first one is about the heavy snow that we had. And with such a heavy snow, there may be some shortcomings in clearing all the streets. But the effort by the Township Public Works staff is commendable. And I wanted to extend thank you for everybody who helped to keep our roads clean and passable. Now, as you may know, during the snowstorm, there are neighbors that they help neighbors. And a perfect example was the effort by two 16 years old students that I read about them this morning at Franklin Reporter and Advocates. Noel and Noah, Noah, Brett, Margie, set out at about 6 a.m. on Sunday to help neighbors mainly the elderly neighbors who could not handle shoveling the snow themselves. They cleaned 15 properties, and in fact, Noah was working until midnight. I don't know these two young men or young students in person, although I hope uh, one day to meet them and thank them in person. Such an act of volunteering is commendable. Thank you, Noah and Noel. And Bill, thank you for uh, putting that 
uh, their good deeds in, in your morning edition. The second item is about a wonderful event that we had on Monday, January 18th. And on behalf of Franklin Township, Dr. Martin Luther King Foundation, Board of Trustees, I would like to take the opportunity to thank the many civic, religious, community groups and individuals in our township for coming together on January 18th to commemorate and celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King's 19th annual community breakfast. We had a record gathering with over 420 people participating and the most diverse. In addition, we also collected donations to offer scholarships to our Franklin Township graduates and seniors. We have highlights on our website, ftmlk.org, and we look forward to bringing the community together next year for our 20th annual uh, breakfast, and we hope to see all of you there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tibbs. Uh, John A. Chibs, uh, 25 Parkside. Uh, I just basically wanted to commend the mayor for our meeting we had last night. We had, it was very fruitful, and we had gotten a lot of understanding in terms of the mission statement for the Human Relations Commission, commissioners. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want you, the council, to know that they all look forward to continually solving, help solving with your help the many problems that we have in the economic challenge neighborhood that we have here in Franklin. That was one of the points that, that was raised that in terms of the proposed uh, uh, health, uh, the doctors and the health uh, uh, building that we're about to, about to raise, it was told to me that we basically be concerned within the economically challenged neighborhoods. So we would take all the other considerations into consideration, all the other suggestions. Uh, <coughs> and I wanted to tell everybody that in terms of the, all the last crisis that we had in the township, we know it's all over, and it is all over. And thanks to a lot of, a lot of decisions that we don't, didn't agree with at all. I think a lot of decisions was wrong. But it's over with now, and we hopefully that we had any part to do with it is the reason why it came out okay. I hope you get my drift. Um, secondly, on on the approval of your minutes, you have the reorganization council council reorganization meeting. Now, is that going to? Are you going to approve? The nominations that was nominated for, like the court judge and the prosecutors and then and all that, it's already been done. It was done already. That's already been done. Yes, yeah, just minutes were approved. This is just the minutes of that meeting. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so all the positions are done. All the appointments, it's done. As of the first. For for on the that first day. year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I want you guys to understand, <laughs> there were some serious questions about certain appointments that you made. That came from the community. And I, I wish I had more time, but uh, uh, we, we uh, uh, okay, I, I'll accept that. I, I have to go back to the community and tell them that the appointments were in box solid and uh, that we can't do anything about it. So I hopefully that all of your appointments that you guys made works out. And nobody, Franklin residents, be harmed. Thank you. Thank you. Seagull. Scott Siegel, 2301 Avery Court. As members of the council. But right, last meeting we were talking about the postage situation. And you need things that are metered, right? That was the problem? Mm -hmm. There's many, many things that go out that are okay. yeah, through the through the machine. Yes. Okay. 
Well, I, I contacted stamps.com because I was pretty sure that they did it. In fact, stamps.com does do metering. In fact, they said most people there do metering. And by adopting stamps.com, uh, we were able to 28,000 uh, mailings that go out. We would get a credit of $280 of first class mail each time they use it. It's $15.99 a month or $192 a year. First year, you save money, they give you four free months as well as some stamps, making about $130. And every mailing you do, you would save on first class mail a penny per envelope. Also, if all you do is mailings like that, they come with a free five pound scale. And we're spending $95 a month to rent the scale. And what I did is I called the company, the Jersey, um, the Jersey company down in Freehold. And I said, you need a printer for, for postage for about 15 to 20,000. They showed me one for $18,000. The way it works, he explained, is you have packages of 50 you can put in any one time. It's a hopper system, which means for 28,000 mailings, you have to have 560 packages to go out. So I thought about that as well. And I checked on commercial printers, uh, which go for about four to $6,000 instead of $18,000. They uh, have the upper level, they have 500 envelopes you can put in at one time. So instead of having 560 packages, you only have 56 packages. And the upper level too, you know, first of all, it's a regular printer. You can scan scan the email, you can fax, do all that kind of stuff. But in terms of what we would need it for is you can actually print double-sided paper. You can staple it if you need it. You can have it folded and loaded into envelopes. You can have the envelope sealed. And then with stamps.com, you do the metering. And I think it'd be a lot easier for people to put 500, one package of 556 times than have 560 packages keep loading into the meter. And again, it would save taxpayers money. Now, if we need something larger than a five pound scale, uh, look at W.B. Mason, maybe get something better, we don't need something this big. They actually make a 400 pound scale. It costs $205. And that is, that is specifically designed for postage metering. So instead of spending $95 a month, whatever size scale you're renting, I don't think we need more than 400 pounds. And if you need something less, it would cost even less. Same thing with the printer, you want a black and white printer, it would cost less as well. But $205, you're talking two, after two months of $95, that pays for itself. And I have a bathroom scale. It's, it's 15 years old. It still works fine, so I don't see why that scale could last 10 or 15 years. And we're spending $1,140 a year on that. So I just think if you think out of the box and try to do things a little bit differently, there are ways to save money and the town to run more efficiently. And let's back to that life for a second. We had talked there, we had said that the state of New Jersey, she said, Scott, don't you think the state of New Jersey is very aware of what's happening with towns and with towns with companies moving in and out? I didn't answer you because the state of New Jersey is good, but no government level is ever perfect. And I went back and looked at the news articles about MetLife. Not one of them mentioned, of course, anything about the township getting involved, which is grossly negligent, in my, my opinion. But no mention of the state getting involved to try to save the jobs. I guess what they were looking at it, just 136 jobs is wasn't worth it, rather than the big picture of trying to bring total 2,600 jobs retained or bringing into, into New Jersey. Uh, other articles about companies moving in and out of the state, they do mention the council, the township getting involved. We're trying to get to the state. We have comments from state officials as well to try to work on it. So it uh, didn't work in this case. That was also a shame. And I think there's just a lot of problems with this council. Last year, you've shown yourselves to be unethical, Council Facade, as far as I'm concerned, there were cover-ups, which is corruption. Uh, in terms of finances, I think they're fiscally incompetent. Again, I don't think anyone has con some, somebody has contacted any of the surrounding communities find what they're doing that we're not. That would be nice to hear, but it's now going on about three months, and so far, I don't think anyone has done that. And yeah, you guys got to try to think out of the box more to save people money here. It's not monopoly money. Every dollar taxpayer money is very precious. That's what I believe. And I think there's a lot of things we can improve in this town. Thank you. Good evening. Deborah Inman, 67 Roberts Road. Um, I, first of all, I have a question. When you call a council person, are they supposed to call you back? Do you check your messages? Because I've called councilmen right four times in the past week, 
and have not received not received not one call back. I've reached, I don't know if this is the right form, but I've reached out to Franklin Township Police Department because there is an issue in my neighborhood where one of the neighbors is playing their music extremely loud. And I've called the police. Matter of fact, I'm on first name basis with the dispatchers. So they come, they give them a summons, they continue to play their music loud. How, how was that going to be handled if they're continually paying, playing their music loud? Is it a certain time of night, day? Well, what? It, it, it can start from 2 o'clock in the afternoon to go to 11, 10 o'clock at night. And, you know, I really don't care too much Friday and Saturday, but I work. I get up very early in the morning, and when I come home, I cannot even relax in my own living room because I can hear the bass, the, the lyrics of the music that they're playing. And it's, it's right in my backyard. This is a neighboring household? Yes. So Can you speak to that. We share I'm backyards. Managing. We have uh, She's already said the police department have taken enforcement action. I don't know that we should really comment. It's the it's up to the judicial system now. We have a municipal court and a judge, and that's really if if the police department has taken enforcement action, that's what legally we have the the ability to do. Um, and I, I certainly understand your your frustrations. Right. And I, I'm certainly not diminishing them, but that's that's the system. That's <laughs> The good old U.S. of A. here. So the system uh, is they go out. They the system is they summons. police go out. They conduct an investigation. If they find a violation, they issue a summons, and the people have to go to court. If they're if they're willing to continue to go to court on violations, I, I can't speak to why they would want to do that and not stop doing what they're being issued summonses for. But I think you know you're you're saying that the police department goes out and this takes their enforcement right. action. Right, it's been going on for two months. I, and and ma'am, I don't doubt it. I'm, and I'm, all I'm saying is, mm -hmm. there's really nothing legally. And I, I think the township attorney would jump in here and, and and agree with me here. We issue summonses, and they go to court. If they if the judge finds them, they pay their fines. And if they brings them back again, and they pay their fines, that, that unfortunately, that's the way our legal system works. Okay. Just so there's no confusion, manager, mayor. Um, that's no. Thank you, mayor. Um, for anybody, whatever a noise complaint is, just want to be clear. I don't know what happened in your situation, but you call, mm -hmm. they respond. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's loud when they get there, sometimes it isn't. But if it happens a day later or two days later, you would need, if you're concerned, you would need to call and complain again. Just because one complaint, I just don't Trust want. Me when I say I'm on first no, 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 I know. I just with the, to be clear with to the, the public. And the officers came to my door Christmas night. Mm -hmm. I had out of town guests, family visiting. They're not used to that, you know. And the officer did explain to me that they heard it before they got out of their car. Well, no, like the manager said, is right. now it's in the hands of our judicial system. I just want to let you know in the public in general that, can that I, can if I you have to complain each time that you feel that there is. Sign, sign a complaint? I, so I Am I did, able to do that? The, uh, so it, the manager. I, Am, am I, I just, able to sign a complaint mm -hmm. against the residents that are making this noise, that are repeatedly violating the noise ordinance? The noise ordinance requires certain things to be done for a complaint to be signed, and you're not qualified to do those things. Okay. It requires the noise meter readings that then would would then a summons would be issued all right so the answer to that is a qualified no okay. I mean there are other things if they're if you feel that they're doing it intentionally you certainly have the right to sign a harassment complaint mm -hmm. there are a number there are a number of things that you as a citizen have the right to do so the, the answer is no on the noise ordinance because okay. it has certain requirements there are elements of the noise ordinance that you could sign a complaint for just not the basic noise aspect of it um, I just spoke with our attorney. You could uh, find out when the uh, court date is, and you could ask to speak to the prosecutor and give them your side of the story, and that that might help your case. Okay. Can I ask one question? Yes. Were you calling the township telephone number? Yes, that's the only number that I have for okay. you. Okay. When you come back, I'll give you my cell phone number, which everyone should have, mm -hmm. because that township number, I think I'm on a Cisco, uh, you need to clean out your mailbox type of deal. So everyone calls me on my cell phone, so I'm going to give you that cell phone number okay. and my card. Okay. okay? Thank you. Any, anyone else? Uh, 
Benjamin Guy, 35, Patton Drive, uh, Somerset. Um, the one thing I always ask everybody here, and the last time I asked is, uh, what is the real vision for this town? Like, I'm going to keep asking. I'll probably see me every council board meeting until I actually get a proper answer. The reason why I ask this question is because as I go down the line and I get pushed off to the next level and next level, I still don't get an answer. So one thing I want to know is that uh, is this considered a city? Is it considered a town? Is it going to be a township? Is it a rural, rural area? Is it a suburban area? What exactly is that? How is it classified at all? All right, because of the population growth, and me and uh, Mr. Von Lucker had that debate last time when I was actually here, is about um, where exactly do we actually classify ourselves? Because again, um, in the Flanker Reporter, the reporter is here at all, he reports as his eight villages, and what well, we're still classified as a township or a town or what have you. Um, in order to unify any plans, you actually have to have a vision on what, how you can actually unify that. Um, and if I ask anybody here, um, s still we get no answers. So um, my main thing that I'm going to talk about now is really I'm just getting to the gist of it, which is what's coming up now is the master plan. Um, I talked to Mr. Healy via email, haven't got a chance to actually sit down with him in depth, but my main thing is that that's coming up and that's going to affect the actual growth rate and actually how we actually um, move forward with this town. Um, that's a 10-year plan that affects not just uh, the seniors, not just the regular families that are here, but also the youth that is in this town. And uh, um, over the last 10 years that we've actually issued this plan, we haven't actually been following through with the actual plans that are in the plan, I mean, in the, in the master plan itself. There's a lot of things that are still lingering in there from 1999 that we just had a race debate about, which had to do with Catawba Park. That's been there on the table since 1999. So I don't understand. That's why the last time I came to this meeting, I didn't understand how we were still lingering on something that we already planned to do. That was the, that's the one thing I, um, that's one thing I want to address. Second thing is that, again, in that master plan, it says that we're supposed to be working with the school board. There's about a, that's about $180 million worth of money that the taxpayers pay, pay out, probably about $1.5 million of, $1.5 billion of tax collection that we've actually estimated over the last 10 years that, again, we only spent on the youth in this town probably about, maybe about 3% of that, of that money, if that, less than about $15 million over the last maybe 10 years at all, based on budgetary stuff. So when I ask these questions, I ask really where exactly where we're going and actually what, what our vision is for this town. Because again, as we're segmented off, we, we, push the segments, we push the segments out more and more as we go along. And I'm asking, when do we actually get unified? Because the people that we push the, push the places to to actually unify us, I don't know whether or not they're going to be here. Because it's some fact is, again, they've been sitting in positions for a long time frame. One thing we always go back to is what's in black and white, what's on our governing documents actually how we, how we actually have to, have to move forward. And if we have commitments to move forward with that as our guidelines on how we're supposed to move, how are we actually not moving in that direction? How do we have things that are sitting on a master plan that had to do with a big, a big viability of our, what our population is in this town, about 25 to 30% of our town is about our youth. We still haven't done nothing. We haven't committed the funds. We haven't committed a lot of stuff to them. Now, when are we going to get in gear to actually do that? And like I said, we worry about money and we worry about all these other things. We spend a lot of money and the school board can, you can actually look at the school board audit. The school board probably spent, spent about $3 million, $3, 4000000 million over the last seven years in just legal fees because of, because of things that went on behind the scenes. Like I said, and again, that's a waste of money. And for the town to say, township council to say, hey, look, well, we had, we, we had no connection with the school board over the last seven, ten years, that's not fair to the town as a whole. It's not fair. Because again, you guys set the agenda as far as what you agreed on and what you voted for, for the master plan to actually work with them. That's in black and white. And if that was a contract that was signed, we all be, you all would be fired because of it. And like I said, that's just the reality, reality of it because you can't say that you can't work with somebody and it's in black and white. I understand that they, they might have opposed to do meetings and everything like that, but again, we all agreed to it. You guys are doing tax collection for them. Again, you can either, you, you know, I understand law-wise, you're supposed to pass through and do whatever else is there, but again, legal-wise, like I said, it's, a, bi it's binding, a binding agreement that you guys are supposed to be, at least work together. You, you're passing money over to them, so we, there's, a, there's a reason why we should actually be, you guys should be actually forced to work together. So my thing is that as this master plan gets revised, you actually really focus on what your agenda, agenda items that have been lingering the longest. A lot of these things that are lingering the longest had to do with, with, with adequate resources for youth in this town. 
And like I said, I think you guys need to step up and actually really, really put that at the top of the agenda when you actually move forward at all. That's it. That's my piece. Thank you. Well timed. Well timed. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Good evening. My name is Eugene Walt. I'm from 24 Tall Oaks Road, Somerset. I'm here to speak about this terrible weekend that we had. Everybody familiar with this? Are you all familiar with this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got names, telephone numbers, you know? You got a problem? You call. The only numbers on here that you are sure of getting police headquarters, 9-11, you call town council, you get a machine, we'll get back to you, you never hear from them, okay? Now, to go on, Sunday morning, got up to go out and remove the snow. My street, Tall Oaks Road, had at least a foot and a half to two feet of snow still on the street. Driveways were uh, plowed in. Fire hydrant was buried. My mailbox was buried. Nobody could get out. Everybody got up and came out and they shoveled out their driveways. They shoveled off their walks. But they couldn't go anywhere. So we figured sometime during the day the snow plow would be there. No. So I got on the horn. I called Mr. Wright, no response. Call Department of Public Work, no response. Even call the mayor, no response. What number did you call? Beg pardon? Uh, the, right here. What number did you call? Because I got a number of phone calls and I responded to everyone. My wife has the number at home. I didn't bring the number with me, but the number is at home. I responded now, to every okay. phone call. Okay. Uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, okay. I finally uh, got a number for uh, Mr. Wright. And you'd be surprised how I got it. I had to call Marilyn to get this number for Mr. Wright, to get in touch with Mr. Wright. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll explain that to you later because I know you're a little puzzled. Uh, finally, when I got the number, I called. No response. All right, and I'm getting agitated because I've been out there shoveling snow. I'm 76 years old, and I've been out there all day shoveling snow. My wife was supposed to pick my son up at the hospital. He had knee surgery. And I told her, I said, you're not going to get out here because the street's not plowed. But she didn't listen to me. She went out, and she got stuck. And I spent an hour out there trying to get her out of the snow get the car back into the driveway, okay? So I went to bed that night. I was tired, went to bed, agitated, couldn't sleep. Two o'clock in the morning, I woke up. I said, I'm going to try this again. I called Mr. Wright. I got his wife on the phone, told her who I was. She put him on the phone. I told him what the problem was, said, let me make a couple of calls and I'll get back to you. Half an hour later, he called me back. He says, you know what? He said, I called the town uh, manager. He said, I called the mayor. And you know what they said to me? It's 2 o'clock in the morning. What the hell do you expect us to do? Am I right? Yes, sir. OK. So he continued on in the morning. I stayed in touch with him. We were back and forth, back and forth. Maybe about 8, 8.30, plow shows up. So I call him and let him know that they came. All right. How many people do it take to run a snow plow? One, right? Two people in the plow, in the truck. We got a fire hydrant there that's buried. And these guys are riding around plowing the snow. One guy's sitting there uh, running his mouth when he could have been out uh, shoveling that, that uh, fire hydrant out, which is still buried. Okay? If there was a fire, 
they wouldn't be able to get to the fire hydrant. They, would, they wouldn't be able to find it. What happens if you park by a fire hydrant and the police come along? What happens? They tow your car. Ticket it or tow. You get a ticket. Mm -hmm. All right. But it's all right for these guys to come out with their snow plows and bury the fire hydrant. That's okay. All right. And they do it every year. Every year, they bury that hydrant. All right. What's, what's up here? Sir, if you can you wrap know? it up. I mean, common sense would tell you, here's something that we need in case of a fire. Why would you bury it so no one could see it? Sir, your time okay. is up. Uh, Mr. Kramer, Mr. Mayor, <laughs> um, if the council would approve, I believe we need to hear him because when he called me at 2 o'clock in the morning, he got my wife on her phone. Right. And then I said, okay, let me take it on your phone. And that's when I believe I called the township manager. Now, he will explain what happened, so we'll go down the road with that one. Uh, and then I called the mayor because he's the mayor, and if, if, I, if I get called at 2 o'clock in the morning, he gets called at 2 o'clock in the morning because there's a saying, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. And that's the way I felt. Now, if it's okay, I would like him to finish what he had to say and to throw in something else. Ms. Congo uh, lives right next door. Her husband's in intensive care. So again, I needed the, sh the snow moved in order to get her out. Now, I was willing to pay my son and everybody else to go over there and, and shovel her out. And she said, Carl, don't worry about it. I called the hospital, everything good because I was going to have my son and his boys from college shovel on down the street to dig her out. And I said, once I get you out, you're going to have to catch a cab because I can't dig the whole sidewalk. I can't dig the whole street. So that's where we ended up. Uh, and if you do call us, I told the young lady here, if you call my Cisco mailbox, I don't know what it is, but I'm going to have to put my cell phone number out there on the mailbox, and I'm going to be like the mayor, have my cell phone number right here. So people can call me up. If you have my business card, it has my cell phone number on there. Ladies and gentlemen, there you go. Do call that card. I call this number. You know what they said when I called this number? Not a working phone. That's what they told me. I've had this card ever since you first took office. I've had this card. Is that the Cisco number? I don't know whether it's a Cisco number or not. Does it have a six? Oh, you wouldn't know. Six three nine three, is that your number? That's the extension. It said not a working number. That's why your son and my grandson, right. very good friends. Right. My grandson lives in Maryland, so I call him. He called your son. That's how I got your wife's cell number. Okay, I had to go through all of that in order to get a hold of my councilman. That's a joke. That's a joke. You got all these numbers in here. What good are they if we can't get to you? I've used these numbers for animal control. Never could get them. I had to call police headquarters in order to get animal control. That's a message for uh, Mr. Wright because we were having a problem with, uh, uh, with the uh, coyote, with a coyote in our neighborhood. Never heard from anybody. So when animal control finally called me, they said to me, oh, we're aware of that problem. We've been having that problem for years. Oh, wow. You've been having it for years. What have you been doing about it? You know, you're talking about a dangerous animal running loose out here, and you tell me you've had that problem for years, and you haven't done anything about it. Like so many other things that go on here in Franklin Township. I've been here over 40 years. I've been on Tall Oaks Road since its inception, okay? And I've never gotten any satisfaction. Whenever I had a problem, never got any satisfaction. My yard, every time you have a heavy rain, it looks like the Raritan River coming through there, you know? But nothing gets done. I come up here and I complain. So, so perhaps, gets done. perhaps you... Nothing. Perhaps when um, public comments is over, the manager can respond to your comments. I'll respond to your comments. Say that again. 
When public session is over, the manager can respond to your comments. Oh, okay. and, I, and I'll respond to your comments as well. Okay. I need somebody to respond because, you know, uh, like I said, I've been here for over 40 years, and I get no satisfaction. As, as Rodney Dangerfield would say, I get no respect. Okay. okay. And I pay my taxes. I have never missed paying my taxes since I've been here. Okay. And every time an election year comes up, I come on this door, uh, come out and vote for me. Uh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And you can trust me, Richard Nixon. Okay. Okay, sir, well, you've, you've, gone, you've okay, gone past yeah. your time. Oh, I'm past Count. my time? Yes. Oh, I didn't know there was a limit. There's a five-minute limit. Thanks. We let you go past yeah, that. Okay, well, thanks for letting me know. You and, and, sir, you should, keep, you should also keep in mind, you should also keep in mind there are nine of us up here, so if you don't get one, you should go down the list to the next. We all yeah, represent if you, you. If you had told me that there are nine of us here, I wouldn't have been there are so nine of us here. You. Yeah. So I, I'm just telling you in the future reference, yeah, if you don't get any to satisfaction, because okay. that's what everybody else does. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing no one come forward, Mayor, I motion to close the public portion of the meeting. Seconded. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Public session is closed. Uh, it is uh, now time for the managers, uh, I'm sorry, for the council comments. Uh, we will start, um, unless you wanted to respond right away, Mr. Mayor. I, it's, it's, I, you can certainly move me up. I, I that's would, fine. I think I can, that's a good idea. I mean, I can. We can discuss the, uh, several issues, sir. sir don't it, leave, sir. We're 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 here to respond to you. We're going to respond to you now. I was going outside That's okay. And I may not make you cool off, but I will address some of your concerns. And I can tell you that one, I'll offer my apology. And 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 Councilman Wright and I have had an opportunity to discuss this. Um, and and this is please don't accept this as as making excuses. Your streak got forgotten, and I apologize for that. And there's no there's no excuse for it. Um, there are reasons for it, and I've gone over those reasons with uh, with Councilman Wright. I, and I will talk to you privately. I will. It, it, it doesn't matter what the reasons are. I'm not offering an excuse to you. I'm telling you that I'm sorry that your street got forgotten in a mix-up that was supposed to be rectified on Sunday evening. That didn't happen. And your street didn't get plowed until Monday morning. There's no two ways about it. Um, that won't happen again. I've discussed it with the public works manager. And we need to make sure that that doesn't happen again. And in the 200 and some odd miles of roadway, not many got forgotten, but we're not perfect. And in a 30, 24, 25, 30 inch snowstorm, which doesn't happen very often, in fact, the, the last time it happened even close was 20 years ago in 1996, um, we did okay. We didn't do great. We don't get A pluses. We don't, we don't get an F, but we missed your street. And for that, I'm sorry. <coughs> Some of the things that you raised, though, I just want, I, I want to be clear about. The Public Works Department doesn't clear fire hydrants. We have thousands of fire hydrants in this town. If I had Public Works crews to go out to <coughs> clear fire hydrants, none of the streets would get plowed. We rely on all of the residents of this town, and we urge them. I have one in my front yard. The last thing I do after I get done doing my sidewalks and my, my driveway is to go clear the snow around the fire hydrant. That's what we ask all residents to do that have fire hydrants in front of their homes. And we rely on the residents to do that. There is absolutely no way that the Public Works Department can clear snow from around fire hydrants. Likewise, a plow operator can't be concerned with when they're going down the street throwing the snow on the fire hydrant. That happens. They're alongside the street, just like anything else alongside the street, that gets snow thrown on it as you clear the road. That's just the nature of snow plowing, and I can't fix that, and there's nothing that we can do to make that not happen. So that does, that, that's the case. Your concern about contacting the police department for animal control. Animal control is a function of our police department. That is who you should call 
when you need animal control. All right, animal control, the shelter number is the shelter number during business hours, that's all. Any animal emergency, the police department should be contacted. The, like I said, animal control is a function of the police department. As far as coyotes, coyotes are a wild animal. Our animal control office is for domestic animals, not wild animals. Wild animals are handled by the State uh, Fish and Wildlife Service, not our animal control office here. We don't provide animal control for wildlife. We, control, we provide animal control for domestic animals like dogs and cats. That's what our animal control's function is. So if there is a coyote problem, it's an issue that they turn over to the state. It has nothing to do with our animal control office. Um, other complaints, I'm trying to think of other concerns that you raised. Does anyone want to help me here? Two drivers. Two drivers. I, I don't know the circumstance behind the two drivers. The only thing I can tell you is that it wouldn't be common unless, uh, unless there was a situation where they were alternating or they were training a new, new employee who's a laborer who doesn't have the uh, uh, commercial driver's license and can't, uh, can't drive a plow truck. I, I don't know. I can look into that. But I know that the crew that went out included a foreman. Um, that went out to Tall Oaks on, on Monday morning. So I, without looking into it, I can't tell you why. But we do have employees within Public Works that aren't qualified to operate plow trucks. So that very well may have been the case. I don't know. I'd have to look into that. Two in the morning. Two, well, the, the two in the morning phone call to me? <laughs> well, the two in the morning phone call to me was our plow operators had operated at that point. Um, and they were, they were relieved not long before that, two o'clock in the morning. Um, because by law, they're only allowed to drive plow trucks for so long before they have mandatory rest periods. We staggered our plow truck drivers, and at that point, I believe we were about 36 hours into the uh, event, and the plow drivers were sent home. Um, the plow drivers were actually sent home at 2 o'clock, and the oversight, Mr. Mayor and, and Councilman and I have already discussed this, and the reason for my apology is, your street was on a list to be done late, sun, late uh, Sunday night, early Monday morning, and there were two crews out, and each crew chief thought that the other had the street on their list, and it, got, it was an oversight. I, I, like I said, I'm not making excuses for it. It shouldn't have happened. It did, and, that, and I can only apologize. I can't do anything more than that. I can't undo what was done. So that's why I say it, it was not something that was done intentionally. One foreman thought it was on, their, on the other's list, and then vice versa, and it got left off the list. It was on the list that I provided based on a conversation I had with Councilman Wright uh, later in the afternoon, early evening of Sunday. And that was based not on your complaint, but on your, I guess, your next door neighbor, the woman whose husband was in the hospital. Can I speak? No. Can I, 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 Public session is is over. Did you have other manager comments? I n not at this point. No. I mean, if you want me to do my full manager's report, it's just a lot of what I just covered. I mean, we're still in operate. We're still in snow plowing operations. There are crews out right now. There are many streets that are are not completely plowed. Um, there's front end loaders out. Understand that this was a record setting snowstorm. We we are not ordinarily in the business of clearing 24 to 30 inches of snow off our roads. Generally speaking, in this part of the country, we receive snowstorms that top out at around 10 inches, 12 inches. We received more than double that and then close to triple that. Um, people are going to complain that there are snow piles on corners. Those snow piles will probably be there for some time. Um, and at major intersections, the county, the state, and our local uh, uh, Public Works will go out with front end loaders. Um, it is a violation of State Department of Environmental Protection uh, regulations to just go dump, you know, someone suggested we should take the snow and dump it in the river. We can't do that. The DEP has a big problem with people who do that. You can't just dispose of snow. You can't just move snow from one location to another. If snow is contaminated with road salt and the oils off the roadway. You can't just take it from one place and move it to another. It has to melt basically in place. <clears throat> you know, so, and, and people have questioned things like why we're doing the walking paths on DeMott Lane or JFK Boulevard before streets are completely plowed. 
the, the, those paths are walking routes for children who go to school. The alternative is that they walk in the street, which is already narrowed. So we have crews out clearing those walking paths that we're responsible for so that the children have a safe uh, route to school when they have to walk. Um, there's lots of considerations when we, when we, uh, we decide what we're going to do and what we're not going to do after the snow is done falling. Um, we're not perfect. We're always trying to make ourselves better. Um, the, the operation will continue as long as it needs to. Uh, like I said, there are crews out on overtime right now, clearing streets, trying to get it as far as it, we can to the curb. Understand that when you plow 30 inches of snow to the curb, things like mailboxes get broken. It happens. We replace mailboxes. If your mailbox is broken, I ask you to call the Public Works Department and they'll put you on the list so that when the snow melts, we can get out there and replace your mailbox, if that's the case. County roads, it's the county's responsibility. Township roads, it's the township responsibility. So if you live on Amwell Road or Elizabeth Avenue or South Middlebush Road, contact the county. If you live on our streets, contact us. If your street isn't plowed, you need to contact the Public Works Department, all right? Monday through Friday, business hours are 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Contact them directly, and if you don't get them, contact my office, extension 6201. I'll get you through to them, trust me. Um, we're going to keep working to get the snow cleared. All I ask is that everyone be patient. Mr. Mayor, if I may just make one comment. Councilwoman Sherman. Uh, if I realize you're you're still frustrated. You probably haven't gotten all your answers. Yeah, but we can't open the public session again. I'm sure the the no, but I, I'm sure our manager would be happy to talk to you at any time. Sure. Call him, set up an appointment, come Absolutely. in, whatever you want to do. We, we can't talk. I'm sorry. We're, we're it's still it's structure. But come, don't don't leave here more frustrated than you came. Talk to somebody, a, a councilman, right? Okay. I, I just wanted to relieve some of your frustration. Okay. Okay, Councilwoman Sherman, your your comment, council comments. We'll start oh, council okay. okay. So we're going to go into council comments now. Yes. Okay. So. Um, what, what, so let, let me gather my thoughts again. I. I understand there's been frustration and I even in my own community where um, uh, we have private contractors come in we've never had delays like we've had I was I was in the house two and a half days they they didn't get to my driveway for two and a half days and we pay fees to have this all done so it, it, it is true it was a record of snowfall but your issue was was very different and and I, I do feel bad. I'm sorry that it happened, and I'm sure everybody feels the same way. Um, I, I do want to report about economic development. The things that are, things that are going on. Our um, committee has uh, uh, moved ahead, and we are planning some meetings that I think will be very beneficial to the township. Uh, we will have the. Um, Somerset County uh, business partnership representative who had been doing uh, economic development for the county come in and uh, talk to us and, and help us get ready to uh, our plan is to put together an RFP that is a proposal uh, to look for consultants who will work with us on economic development and uh, an overview of what it is that we are looking to accomplish what our vision is and we have I'm sorry the gentleman has walked out uh, I, I do want to talk about vision um, there are all kinds of visions for all kinds of issues and we have different groups working on different visions uh, certainly economic development is a very important vision it affects the growth of the town it affects the uh, economic stability of the town and our ability to either stabilize taxes or hopefully someday uh, even reduce them if we can bring in new businesses. Our vision is to work with the most current trends in economic development, 
things such as businesses on the first floor, retail businesses on uh, streets such as Davidson Avenue, uh, offices in in the middle floors, and then residents on the third and the higher levels. This is the newest trend in economic development, and this is what we're going to hire a consultant for eventually to work with us. The other areas as far as vision, we can certainly you know, discuss those. Other council people may want to touch on those as, as uh, we move down the line here. Uh, we're also going to be talking to Spl Plan Smart New Jersey. Uh, they're coming in to uh, give us a presentation and perhaps work with them as one of their uh, towns to, to uh, be a model town for other communities having a the situation similar to ours of the changing economics and the need to uh, respond to that and we are responding to it and we're going to wind up doing the right things for Franklin Township and that's my report Mr. Mayor thank you uh, Councilman Charles only yes uh, Unfortunately, that I came in uh, late today. You know, okay. uh, it's unfortunate that I came in late today. You know, this no made uh, driving very, very unbearable. So my wife went to work and uh, she came back. She was stuck, so she just came back late. That is why I'm late. So I sent a text to the councilman that I'll be coming in late. You got it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, council, um, Councilwoman um, Francois has stepped out, so we'll go to Councilman uh, Vassanella. Okay. So uh, I just wanted to mention one more thing concerning fire hydrants on the manager could clarify. I believe most, if not all, fire hydrants in town do have a pole type of uh, whatever apparatus that sticks up out of the pole, out of the hydrant. No. Okay. So we don't, that, we, we don't, have, we don't have those on all our fire hydrants. But we have there's, some. There's many that do. Yeah, okay. So there are many. And um, for what it's worth, one of the main reasons they're there is if and when they are covered with snow, that a fire truck. Um, could notice that. I believe it has a little reflector tape, et cetera. And the manager can maybe. Uh, I, 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 I mean, there's a safety just, mechanism. No, I mean, that, that, that locates the fire hydrant. I'll be honest with you, Councilman, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm kind of shocked that this should be a discussion at this, at this point, only because anyone who has a fire hydrant in front of their house should know that they need to clear that fire hydrant. I mean, we, we have never provided any service, nor has any town that I'm aware of anywhere where other than there are volunteer fire companies that will oftentimes go out and shovel out fire hydrants simply as a service to the uh, to the community we have so many fire hydrants that like i said there is absolutely positively no way that we could provide the staff to go out and clear those fire hydrants i have had one in front of my house since 1989 so what's that 27 years and every single snowstorm that has come i have gone out and i've shoveled that fire hydrant out because who does it stand to benefit me if my house gets is on fire I don't want the fire company to have to wait and dig it out before they can hook the hose up to it and anyone who has one I'm just saying right now if you have one in front of your house go out and shovel it out um, because it's to your be your benefit to do that um, that, that is the most uh, if, if that's the that's probably the most important thing I'm gonna say tonight and I, and I didn't realize I was even gonna say it but I just said it and it's very important that you do it no, and I'm, I'm glad I'm, you. I'm with you. I'm glad you reiterated yes, that. I, I stand by everything you said. I just want to make mention that uh, you'll see them in different parts of the state and different parts of our town. Sure, it is a safety mechanism. There's so one on the in front of my house. It's got a big reflector. So it's got a big exactly. reflector. So for whatever reason, even in the middle of a storm, before anybody gets out there and shovels, or right after a plow may cover it, there are some safety mechanism in place and. And that is one of them, so God forbid. And trust me, it's no fun. Mine is at the end of a cul-de-sac, and that's exactly where the plow truck piles the snow. So this time it was about six feet high for me to go through to get to the fire hydrant, and I did it. No, it's absolutely good advice. Just like the mailbox, you technically need to clear a path so that, so that they can deliver mail. Um, 
So I'm not going to go over everything having to do with snow removal. I think the managers uh, described it well. We, uh, there was a few glitches in the system. Should have happened, no, but considering we did have the worst snowstorm in 20 years, um, we want to achieve for a higher standard, but I, I think we did pretty good, all things considered. Um, I, the gentleman had left, but there was talk about the school system. Um, we have little control over what they do with their money, although we do work with them in certain ways. There is a committee. I don't serve on that particular committee. There is a committee of four council people, and I believe three or four Board of Ed members that do confer uh, occasionally and have some common goals and common projects they work on together. But for the most part, um, questions concerning the cost, the expenses, or the vision or the services that they provide. Um, they meet, well, I believe it was twice. I think now it's once a month. And those meetings are open to the public as are council meetings. And there are public portions of that meeting, which um, my understanding is they welcome and invite input and ideas from the public. Um, not too much else. Just please be safe. If there is anything that you think needs to be done with plowing that's been left undone, like the manager said, call the um, Public Works Department and, and leave a message there. And you're welcome to call and contact any, any council person, of course, email or phone. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Vassanella, Councilman Prasad. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, firstly, the township and the manager has done a great job in trying to uh, keep our head above water with this record-breaking snow. Uh, I've lived here for nearly 40 years, and this has been one of the worst that we've ever seen. So kudos. Uh, I know. Thank you, not Council. I, I, and and I and so and and I haven't said it, and I, I'm not going to give a report. But thank you. Yeah. So uh, you know, you cannot prepare for something like this, and if this is as bad as it got, there is the whole borough of Queens in New York that's still struggling and the streets have not been plowed. So we're, we, please be patient. Uh, but it gave me a lot of time to think about snow removal. Firstly, the story this morning uh, about Noah and Noel, uh, it's really uh, encouraging to see that. We are our brother's keepers, and uh, we need to think about some kind of a volunteer system uh, to match those who are in need, especially the seniors, with those. Uh, and we could use social media or whatever we need to do to, to put together some kind of an app to do that and be able to match the volunteers with that. And even those that want to do it for money uh, can be matched up so uh, that they can, people can get the help. Uh, putting the snow out onto the street is counterproductive because it gets a vicious cycle. It gets plowed back onto your driveway and blocks you in. And, you know, it's been happening for 40 years to me that I get plowed in and I go back out and I dig myself out. But, uh, you know, when that volume is there, it's not easy. And uh, so, but uh, that's Mother Nature for you, so you got to deal with it. But uh, we'll try to do our best, but hopefully we can find help and systems by which we can collectively uh, work better to, to get this thing going. So uh, other than the storm, uh, the MLK breakfast was uh, a, a huge thing, and I say uh, congratulations to everyone that participated, and uh, hopefully we'll have this as the premier event. Uh, it is already the premier event in central New Jersey for uh, Dr. King's birthday and the scholarship money that we've been raising. So congratulations to everyone that worked hard for it. Uh, with that, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Prasad. Councilwoman uh, Robinson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, First of all, um, Dr. Karazi, um, congratulations to you and the foundation on the Martin Luther King celebration. It was a very uh, heartfelt, 
program and continue many years of success as you guys move forward um, in that in those efforts. Um, Mr. Siegel, you talked about this machine with printers. I, don't, I guess he left. But um, as an IT person or in the IT profession, uh, sometimes the maintenance as well as the support. And you mentioned four thousand to six thousand dollars for the actual print device. Um, I wasn't sure if you meant that was for lease or for actual uh, outright purchase. So those things come into consideration as well. Um, in addition to the toner um, and the paper that goes along with it. So uh, I would like to see where you're coming up with your numbers because you're throwing out numbers. However, you have to look at it in its totality. Um, in regards to the comments or statement by Mr. Guy, um, I, what I've seen in the 15 years that I've been a resident here in Franklin is that the vision and the plan is there. I think how we get there and execute the plan changes or the priority changes as administration changes. Um, there's no excuse. I think this is a better time than any for us to come together as a community and work together to figure out how do we get that done. Um, and to your point of the master plan being in place for many years, and we're just getting to the point of actually having those hard discussions or conversations about Catalpa Park, it's pretty disheartening. Um, and we do need to do a better job. Um, in regards to snow plowing, um, Township Manor and Department of Public Works, um, we're doing a Herculean job with the limited resources and the extremely high volumes of snow, and the drift did not help. No. Um, I'm on a dead end. <laughs> I get six feet at the, end of the, at the end of the day, at the end of my driveway. Sometimes I'm already at work. I have to actually carry a shovel and my military brogues in the vehicle to shovel my way in. Um, it's not easy. However, uh, the plows were out there from Saturday until Sunday, I think in a little bit over 24 hours, trying to cover over 20 some odd miles of street. So about two, over 200 miles. 200 miles altogether. Street, so. so, I mean, keep in mind, if the snow is still coming down, whether you pass on at one pass, 30 minutes later and the snow's still falling and the winds are 40 plus miles per hour, you're not going to see that much progress. It just takes time and, and, and patience on everyone's part. So um, there's no, no one solution no to, that fits all, but understand that they were out there. Cloud streets have to be still, yet you said today. Still out, still have right to now. Cloud. The school district made a decision that they needed to open school on today. So pathways to, for the buses to be able, for the children to have to walk. All those things have to be taken in consideration. So people need to understand everything, the big picture. Everybody is looking at their own little segment. You have to worry about the entire town. We have to worry about the entire town. What I would say, and I don't know how feasible this would be, is to have some type of command center, solution center where people can call in and someone is readily available to answer and put their street on the list and provide some type of answers. I don't know if we do some type of command center team to uh, moving forward. Um, we can talk, toss that around offline. Sure. But this is a, a suggestion for sure. any type of uh, inclement weather, adverse weather, or any type of uh, disaster or adversity that we may be facing. So, and also the last thing I would have to say for my published cell phone number is 732-419-8530. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Councilwoman Robinson. Councilman Wright. To all the public out there, my sentiment's exactly with Mr. Vaughn Lockett, because we had this conversation about why, uh, why Tall Oaks Road was not plowed. Because uh, like I said, I wasn't happy, so I called him and woke him up. And Mr. Mayor will also attest to the fact that I woke him up too. Now, they weren't happy, but I wasn't happy either, and again, the next day, we figured out why Tall Oaks Road was not plowed. Um, once that was explained to me, I, I, I felt confident about it because there was nothing we can do. Um, all I can do is blame it on the contractor because that's who was out there. Uh, and he said, the township manager said, one had one idea, someone else had another idea, and we just could not get it done. So I can't pass the buck, 
the buck stops here, my fault. I represent him, and I dropped the ball. Um, but that being said, when he did call me uh, about the fire hydrant, I was about to get my shovel and go in and take care of business. But as a field director, I couldn't get up here to take care of business. Uh, but now that the township manager explained it to us, I'm still going to have to go out there and take care of business <laughs> <laughs> and, and shovel the snow at the uh, fire hydrants in my neighborhood. Uh, this was a bad snowstorm. Uh, I myself had to go out Saturday night, 1130, shovel myself out. I did a couple of neighbors. We all got together and shoveled some snow uh, to make everything work right. And the reason I know Tall Oaks Road was covered up is because I drove around almost to all my neighborhood, from St. Matthias on that side of JFK all the way to the other side. And I don't see my gadfly here. Um, he must be sick because he'll tell you that I went by his house <laughs> <laughs> and, and looked at the snow situation. Uh, in case you want those, Bill Connell. And I went by his house to see what was going on. Uh, so uh, that part being said, we don't need to labor on that, but it was a fun experience, a learning experience. And the next time I see some snow out there, I'm going to stand there and wait for the plow to come. That way I know it comes. And the one other thing that we did do, uh, my wife and I, because we were driving around, uh, she got mad because she was in the car while I was stopping and running, riding around, so she wasn't happy either. Uh, now, two of the uh, meetings that I went to. The Housing Authority will meet next week, month, uh, next week Wednesday. Uh, the previous meeting, uh, we just went over the new uh, contracts that we have and also um, getting our books in line with all the other housing authorities so that when we sent our work down to the DCA and the other agencies, it would not get kicked back for uh, incomplete paperwork. On the redevelopment agency this past Monday, uh, we elected Mike Giannato, president, and councilwoman at large, uh, Ms. Kimberly Francois, as vice chairman of the uh, redevelopment agency. Uh, the meeting was short because all we did was pay bills. And just in case you know, you want to know, the bills are not paid by the township. They're paid by the companies that do business in Franklin Township on the redevelopment agency. Um, for recreation, and I apologize because I didn't bring my minutes, but we have another meeting coming up. Um, I believe it's the week after next that the meeting will come up to where we have a, a discussion. So again, if you want to know about the recreation committee, come on down and, and you'll hear us both. On the land use meeting, we will have a meeting this week Mr. Von Locker, the land use meeting, we meet this week, correct? We, we meet this week? Is this it week. Tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow's Wednesday, yeah. I'm hoping not. Because I, I, don't, I don't think, I think it's the following. I think, I think it's the, the following week. Wednesday? I think I'm, it's the following Wednesday. I'm bringing my calendar up right now. Um, <laughs> no, actually, what's... No, it, it is the fourth one Wednesday. Year. It's the fourth Wednesday. But perhaps there's no agenda. But I, I, I will say, I, I don't know that there's anything that, as far as agenda items to discuss. I, and, and otherwise, Mark Healy, our planner, would have given them to me. And so okay. I think that you're off the hook. Now, um, we do have, and I guess uh, I'm, losing mayor track of, I'm losing track of days that they've like sort of running day. into each other lately. Um, I think that's what happens when you're up at 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> uh, All in good fun, Councilman. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> uh, I think the mayor will probably bring it up, but we're, to have to, we're supposed to have a joint BOE meeting somewhere down the line. And the one thing that I, I, I'm glad the manager brought it up, is that sidewalks had to be clear so the kids would walk on the sidewalks and not the streets. And one of the things that, uh, that I wanted to do was put sh uh, sidewalks out there so the kids could walk on them. Uh, walk them around the area and toward the other uh, schools out there from McAfee to Samson G. Smith to the middle school, uh, Hillcrest and Pine Grove. Uh, they all sit around my neighborhood in my ward and I wanna make sure the kids can get there 
safely. Uh, and we all went over the uh, tall O situation, so we won't even go into that. We went into the music situation, and we all know that that goes to the court. Uh, and again, she dialed the wrong number. So Miss Anne Marie, I'm going to need the uh, telephone, my cell phone attached to my card, just like the mayor at the other end, so people can call me and get the right number. Because they call the, the township number in my uh, extension, and they won't get anything. Okay, so I guess I have to change that too and put my cell phone number on there. Okay, um, that's it, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Wright. I would also, on my township extension, because this is a magic jack number, I have my voice saying, I never answer this phone, and I give this number. I suggest you do the same. Do the Councilwoman same. Francois, you're, we skipped over you. Do you have any council comments? <laughs> well, if you call my number, it says, please do not leave a message on this phone. I do not check messages on this phone. Please call me on my cell phone directly, and I will answer my call, your call. That's what mine says. It's right. been like that for five, ten years now. There are Everybody three of us knows. That do that. Yeah. Mine is the same. I don't know why he couldn't get somebody. Right. So the, the the message and the moral to the story is there are nine people up here. If you can't get your ward council representative, there's no reason, there's no excuse why you can't go down the line and call everybody. You don't always have to call the mayor. We're all elected officials. We're all here to represent you. We all care about the the, the uh, wealth being and the welfare of the people of Franklin Township. And we're up here and we're doing our best that we can. I'd like to thank our township manager. I know it's been a very difficult uh, three or four days for you. I'm sure you haven't gotten much sleep. I want to thank our public works employees that have been out there uh, plowing the roads. I want to thank the, t the township residents because when you think about it, I always say you can look at the glass half empty or half full. God bless America. We're here. We're able to complain, but we're alive. We're not flooded out. We didn't have a tornado. We didn't have a hurricane. We didn't have a major, uh, a massive disaster. So no injuries. Nobody died. It's been somewhat of an inconvenience, and I, I do understand that, but we, we we're all safe. We're all warm. God has blessed us, and we should be grateful. And we will continue to try to improve and do a lot better. And I thank you all for your patience, and just try to stay dry and stay warm. And calm. be calm. <laughs> Keep stay your blood calm. pressure down. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilwoman Francois, Deputy Mayor Chase, Deputy Mayor Dr. Chase. Obviously, the, the biggest topic tonight has been the snow. I think on, on the whole, it's, I think our Public Works Department and our contractors did a very good job. Of course, one street unplowed is one street too many, but it's the only one that I've heard of. Uh, I'll tell you a story about what they were, their kind of work. Uh, sometime, I think, 7 or 8 o'clock Saturday night, uh, my wife pointed out that a truck had gone with flashing lights and everything, so presumably a plow truck, had, had gone up the hill in front of my house and then stopped. And uh, I assume he got stuck. I also assumed he had a two-way radio so that he could call out. It was midnight when Another plow truck came from above and a front end loader from below and dug him out and got him loose. So he'd had to sit there for something like four or five hours. Uh, but of course, at that point, I hadn't started digging out my driveway, so I wasn't going to go out. <laughs> uh, but I figured that if he absolutely needed to, he could get to my house. We had the front door light on. But that's the kind of situation that our public works employees were facing over the weekend. And as the manager says, they're still plowing. And of course, uh, and I had a call this afternoon from a lady on Archer Avenue, which is <coughs> probably in the fifth ward, maybe. Uh, but apparently she was able to get my number because I also have a message on the township number saying call my home number. 
and she'd been, her driveway had been plowed in today, and she was incensed. Oh, uh, I think what happened, and she said that all the driveways on her side of the street had been plowed in and not the ones on the other side. I think the, the driver must have decided that he would do the requisite amount of widening by doing double plowing on one side and not at all on the other side, and maybe we can get them to um, shave off, you know, they're still going around widening the streets, and of course if they're moving a lot of snow, it will fill up people's driveways again. And as Councilman Prasad said, he has to go out and shovel out his driveway. I had to go out and shovel out my driveway. And just after I'd finished, a plow came by and put a little more snow in it. But uh, vision, and I'm sorry I didn't catch your name that spoke about this. I've just been, we're coming up on, uh, at this point, re-examination of the master plan because we used to do this every six years. A few years ago, the legislature changed the time and now it's every 10 years, but it's coming time. Uh, the planning board is just now starting with a work session tomorrow night. It'll be in the large conference room to go over the re-examination report, which is essentially going over all the things that in the last master plan we said we should be doing. And having gone over it, I'd say most of them we did in fact do. Um, and then after that, during the rest of this year and early next year, I, I think we're going to do a real uh, go over of the master plan and introduce and call on the public to come to visioning sessions to come and share with us their view, vision of the township so that we can develop uh, a vision that really comes from the people. Uh, I can say, you know, my vision is we want to keep the kind of balance we have in the township between built up areas and uh, industrial and corporate areas and rural areas. I live in a, a very rural area. Uh, and not to have any, particularly uh, not to have any large scale, as they say, green fields development uh, in fact, that's one of the re main reasons why the township has bought up open space over the years. It is uh, open space that uh, the people can use. Uh, we are going into we're, uh, developing active recreation at Catalpa Park. If anybody who's familiar with the uh, meetings we've had on that know that that's been a very contentious subject. I think we've gotten to a point where uh, the people living near it are grudgingly accepting that we're doing the most we can uh, for them not to be disturbed, but we will have the active recreation there. Meanwhile, we still have uh, a couple of thousand acres of open space that is not developed for active recreation. We were supposed to have on the agenda tonight the introduction of ordinances to go to purchasing another 47 acres. Apparently it's been pulled off because of the, uh, have to reevaluate the valuation of the property, but that will be on probably at the next meeting. Uh, we do keep looking to uh, acquire more open space, although pretty soon, I hope, we'll get to the point where all the land in the township is uh, that isn't built on has been preserved. And of course, we have over 2,000 acres of municipal open space, 4,000 acres of state-owned open space, and several hundred acres of county-owned open space, Colonial Park or Wellbrook uh, Golf Course. Uh, so uh, 
maintaining this open space is probably the, the foremost element of vision for, for me. So I don't have any committee reports. We haven't had any committee meetings. The one meeting we would have before this financial oversight was postponed because uh, Mr. Vornlocker had to take his son to Kennedy Airport that was supposed to go out Saturday and didn't. Um, but we had a special meeting tonight, which actually you'll hear about in the next item on the agenda. And I, I will say I hope we don't have a land use meeting uh, tomorrow night because I had agreed to go to a sustainable Jersey uh, meeting up in Basking Ridge uh, tomorrow night and then come back for the planning board work session. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Um, so let me address some of the things that were said uh, in uh, the public session. Uh, first of all, the 2 o'clock phone call. Yes, I did receive a 2 o'clock phone call. And yes, I did say there's nothing I can do at 2 o'clock. And the reason I said that was that I had been keeping abreast of what uh, was happening with our crews, what was happening with the supervisors there, and I knew that they were beginning to get uh, sleep for the first time in 36 or more hours. And so calling them at that time was going to make th matters worse because then I would have interrupted their sleep and then they would be less functional uh, the next or uh, later that day. I had been receiving many, many phone calls during the day. I'd been... Uh, responding to those phone calls. The manager can attest to many calls between us um, about this street, that street. I had not heard about Tall Oaks. If I had heard about Tall Oaks uh, hours before, then possibly we could have gotten someone out there um, earlier that night. But what I did do was at about 7 in the morning, maybe a little bit after, the manager and I had a discussion, and uh, it was a worthless discussion because the manager had already been on top of it and had, um, had already arranged that crews would uh, be there um, and working on that as, as soon as the crews uh, could come in. So um, I agree with the manager there was nothing to do at 2 a.m. It would have been bad to do something at 2 a.m., but the next uh, opportunity we uh, did um, we, uh, the town responded to the Tall Oaks problem. This is my phone number. This phone number has been sitting next to my name since about two months after I've gotten on council. It is the number listed in the uh, Franklin Times. It is the number listed on the website. Um, I've responded to many, many calls. As best I know, I responded to every single call I got. There were some hang-ups where I did not even receive what number had called. Uh, the ones where they hung up but they did leave a number, I called those back. Um, I'll talk about vision at the end. Um, so as far as the snowstorm more directly, this was a record-breaking storm. In New York City, it missed being the worst storm on record by one-tenth of an inch. We are not done with it yet. We will be digging out for days. In Franklin, it was a tale of two cities. If your street got plowed, you were well served. If your street wasn't plowed, then there's a problem. We have about 870 streets. As best I can tell, we missed 11 streets. This was due to a problem with some contractors. I've asked the manager to report to the public works and financial oversight committees with the results of his best investigation, and the contractor will be brought to task on this. Um, I spent three hours during the storm in a plow truck. Uh, I learned a lot. Snow plowing is a very draining job. Hours and hours of driving in a snowstorm, and you've all driven in a snowstorm, imagine it for hours and hours, leaning forward uh, until your back aches, while, uh, where your job is to get as close to parked cars and mailboxes as possible, of course, without hitting them. It's stressful. 
when there is this much snow, you can't simply point the plow blade in the direction you want to point, uh, you want to push the snow. The snow er exerts a force on the blade, and if you ignore that, the snow will push the truck off the road. Because of that, and just the practicality of time, you wind up putting snow into people's driveways, into fire hydrants, and against mailboxes. The snow was falling so quickly at times, the truck I was in would plow in an area, and then we'd come back 30 minutes later, and it looked like we hadn't plowed at all. So for the first day, all they were doing was trying to keep up with, with the roads, with the snow, and keep the roads basically passable. It wasn't until the second day after the snow stopped that they were able to make headway. By then, the drivers and supervisors were exhausted. They were, they're only human. On Sunday, as soon as I dug myself out and my neighbor out, I drove the town for about three or four hours visiting the people who had called me. After I had already called them, I visited them. Um, and then, um, and as I went around, I reported problems to the manager and to DPW. Um, by the way, thank you to those who called. Um, if uh, I didn't know of problems, I can't fix them. Uh, so your calls were useful to the town, not only to yourself. Also, uh, all but one call was cordial, uh, and I appreciate that. Most people understood this was a record-breaking storm. In all, I think DPW did a good job, but there is room for improvement, and we will strive to make these improvements. Some will be changing protocols, and some may require um, equipment uh, and personnel changes, and those will cost money. Councilman Vassanella uh, has talked about a plan uh, of using GPS. Uh, if we put GPS in every truck and every contractor's truck and they're reporting to a computer system, you can, you can follow and you can see how many times a road is plowed. And given the s storm, you should know how many times a road needs to be plowed. And we would have caught these 11 roads that weren't plowed uh, in that way, and we could have avoided those problems. That will cost money. We've got to decide if we're going to spend that money uh, or not. But you know, certainly right this minute, it sounds like a good idea, but we have to look at the rest of our budget. Um, we are getting some extreme weather conditions in the past few years, and I don't expect it to change, so we will need to adjust. Um, one word adv of advice, however, if you want uh, a humbling experience, be a mayor uh, during a record-breaking snowstorm. It is very humbling. Um, as far as vision, um, you know, I can enunciate particular things uh, in my vision. Um, I cannot express a full vision uh, at, uh, without taking a long time to work at, at that, but the uh, vision I have relative to the master plan is if it were up to me, and it is not, um, we would not build another house in town because that adds kids to schools and that uh, generally the houses don't pay enough taxes to pay for the kids in school, so that means everyone taxes go up. Now, I say that tongue, somewhat tongue in cheek. Obviously, there are places to build. For instance, the economic development, which is part of the uh, vision uh, that's going on, and Councilwoman Sherman is, is um, instrumental behind that, as well as the rest of the uh, committee. Um, there will be some dwelling, uh, uh, dwellings added that are hopefully small that will add, not add that many children, but in done in the right way uh, to, um, to help economic development. Um, also, I uh, would like to say while we are ahead in our COA plan, we always need to think about low cost uh, housing. We have plenty, we have more than we are required to have, but that is something um, that we always need to keep an eye on. And as far as open space, um, you know, I, I would love to, again, we can't do it, I would love to buy up every spare acre in town um, so that it, it is preserved. Some of it would go to parks because I do still believe we need uh, more parks. So that is, in a nutshell, an incomplete listing of my uh, vision. There are much more things. Oh, and then I will repeat one other vision thing is, the most important thing 
is our schools. It, for our town to move forward without moving forward on our schools, um, I, I don't think will happen. I said that in my uh, acceptance speech. Um, it's extremely important. It is township council has limited role in there, but that doesn't mean we can't push that limit as far as we can and be involved with the schools as much as possible. And I have now talked way too long, uh, and I also realized I missed the committee reports, so we basically are moving on back to committee reports. We already heard from uh, land use, uh, public works, uh, public safety. Is there any things? Public safety's meeting in February. And yes. uh, admin, um, Kimberly, Same. anything from admin? We're meeting February 11th. Okay. And financial oversight, actually, uh, we're about to hear from financial oversight and the council discussion items. We have been diligently working on the budget. We have much more uh, budget to discuss, but to discuss any one item or what we do in any one meeting would be uh, pointless. Um, so the uh, moving on now to uh, council discussion item, annual fire district compensation uh, request. So the for the fire districts to give their commissioners uh, a raise, uh, it has to first go before council and then um, go to the voters, uh, which they vote on their budget, not particularly on the, uh, the raises. We had two requests, one from Fire District 1, one from Fire District 2, the one from Fire District uh, 1. Um, we spoke with uh, uh, one of the uh, commissioners who told us about the numerous uh, projects uh, they were um, doing um, and that their commissioners act somewhat act like council but they also act like the manager they act like the CFO they act like all of these things together and uh, the um, financial oversight committee thought unanimously that we should grant the uh, the raises that they were uh, asking for they were taking on uh, a number of additional responsibilities, and we thought that appropriate. The, the, the total salary uh, for these commissioners is $6,500. Um, for Fire District 2, uh, they, it did raise an eyebrow uh, when they asked for one commissioner uh, to be raised from, and this is the commissioner they call the clerk, um, to be raised from $6,000 to $12,000, so 100% raise. Um, we discussed it over with them, and the, um, f to make a very long story short, the, the, the work that th that person does is enormous. Um, but um, we felt, and, and what they were doing was trying to pay the commissioner $6,000 more so they would not have to hire a full-time person. What uh, actually the manager weighed in on this uh, having seen these kinds of things in the town. And what he suggested was that we not give the raise, but that the um, uh, district work into their budget a stipend, which could be paid to anyone, but perhaps to that particular commissioner who uh, has the interest in it and the knowledge in it. Um, and um, the, the um, Representative Fire District 2 thought that was a good idea, so uh, that is the recommendation of the um, of the Financial Oversight Committee. So I'm actually um, not sure. Um, so so the so the well the okay. There's a technical discussion going on. Okay, so actually, rather than me just parrot what the um, what the attorney said. No, I was just uh, pointing out, uh, Mr. Mayor, to the um, to the manager that if the compensation is paid to a fire commissioner, it still will have to be approved by council. So, uh, I I don't um, I, I understand the issues with regards to the clerk. I understand that they, they had duties, um, 
So however it is that you want to word it, but if, if, if that stipend is going to be paid to one of the commissioners, then you will have to approve it. You could approve it and call it a stipend if you'd like. I don't, I don't have an issue with that. It doesn't have to be quote unquote salary, just as a compensation. Okay, so we wouldn't have to necessarily approve if they were to hire someone else, but because it's a commissioner. If they, they actually, if they hired them. somebody else, you had have no approval of it. Right. right. So right. if they if they wanted to hire a, uh, you know, a part-time secretary to do some of these duties, um, as long as the money's in their budget, they would they would have the right to do it. It's only, the, the it's, it's odd because it's the only, virtually the only thing that you get to approve with regards to the fire district, which is their compensation. Um, but if it's, in, in my opinion, from reading the statute, if it's paid to the um, to one of the commissioners, you'd have to approve it. So you could approve it, it as a, I don't know, whatever, $1,000, multiple $1,000 stipend to be paid to, to the commissioner who acts as the clerk. I, I don't have a problem in doing that. It, it's Okay. Um, mon monetarily, well, thank, thank you for that input. Sure. You earned your money tonight. Um, the um, monetarily, that sounds the same. So I would keep my uh, my personal recommendation essentially the same, worded differently, um, as the uh, attorney just said. So, do we have a motion? Um, should we handle this separately by fire district, uh, or we usually, do a we usually do a resolution like the following meeting after they've discussed it. Excuse me. We would put a resolution on for the next uh, meeting. We usually is do it in time? one resolution. Is that one resolution. Is there time for a resolution? When's the, when's the fire district elections, Amory? Um, the president's weekend, and we're meeting the ninth, so we're before. But do they have to get their budget in, or oh. to some agency beforehand? In other words, no. The what budget just goes on the ballot. Goes on the ballot, and so. is voted. It, so it doesn't get sent anywhere until after the election. Okay. So our deadline is not. No, you, you're okay. fine. Okay. If, you, okay. if, you, if you adopt the resolution at the next council meeting, you'll have it done in time that they can put their budget on the ballot and it be an accurate budget. Okay. And uh, so, okay, it sounds like direction from council, I don't want to speak alone here, is for such a resolution to be drawn. Mr. Mayor, that was the recommendation from the Financial Oversight Subcommittee. Okay, so we are only four. We need all of council. We need majority of council to. So the question, Mr. Mayor, is: Is there any objection to directing the clerk to put that on the ballot? Okay, thank you, uh, <laughs> Councilman Chase. I just w wanted to make the point that uh, both the financial oversight committee and the commissioner from Fire District Two agreed that uh, a calling it a stipend would put slightly more control on the fire commissioners as to whether they would pay that in a given year, whereas if we approve uh, it as a salary, it would be there uh, forever, I guess, unless the, they voted to reduce it. It's partly because it, uh, this particular commissioner who is uh, no, no longer by physical disability, no longer able to do full-time work, has the time to do a great deal of the work of the, of the fire district, and therefore they, for, what did he say, six, seven hours a week, uh, therefore he would... Um, be recompensed for the time he put in, whereas other commissioners had full-time jobs and could not put in uh, the, that kind of time on the business of the district. So I support the suggestion. Okay. Unless there is any objection from council, nope. then Favor? you can take that as, as direction uh, for a resolution at the next meeting. Um, so now uh, we're on to item number 11, approval of the minutes. The following minutes are hereby presented for approval by the Township Council. Township Council um, reorganization meeting, January 1st, 2016, 
at 2 p.m., a lovely meeting, if I do say so myself. <laughs> Township Council Work Session Regular Meeting, January 12th, 2016 at 7 p.m. Township Council Executive Session, January 12th, 2016. I move um, to approve the minutes. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, uh, Madam Clerk. Deputy Mayor Chase. Yes. Councilwoman Francois. Yes. Mayor Kramer. Yes. Councilman Onijaka. Yes. Councilman Prasad. Yes. Councilwoman Robinson. Yes. Councilwoman Sherman. Yes. Councilman Vassanella. Yes. Councilman Wright. Yes. The next item is item 12, approval of the minutes. I'm sorry, approval of the warrants. Uh, warrants in the amount of 11 million, um, $11,678.18 on January 26, 2016 are presented to the Township Council for payment. Do I have a motion? I move to approve seconded. the warrants as read be paid. Moved and seconded. Any uh, discussion? Seeing none, uh, Madam Clerk. Deputy Mayor Chase. Yes. Councilwoman Francois. Yes. Mayor Kramer. Yes. Councilman Oni Jaka. Yes. Councilman Prasad. Yes. Councilwoman Robinson. Yes. Councilwoman Sherman. Yes. Councilman Vassanella. Yes. Councilman Wright. Yes. The next item is uh, public hearing and adoption of the ordinances on second reading. Uh, we have one ordinance 412715. Uh, an ordinance authorizing the private sale of township-owned land located in Block 93, Lots 38 through 39 and 40 um, through 41, Delmonico Avenue, uh, in the Township of Franklin, County of Somerset, State of New Jersey, Raritan Valley, Habitat for Humanity, uh, Incorporated. The Township Attorney has approved the affidavit um, of publication and a public hearing is in order. Do I have a motion to open to the public? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion, uh, motion is carried. The meeting is open for public discussion for anyone wishing to discuss this matter. Uh, Mr. Mayor, seeing no one come forward from the public, I move to close this portion of the public seconded. hearing. Seconded. Moved and seconded to close uh, public session. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Public session is closed. Uh, we, uh, do we have a motion for passage? So, so moved. seconded. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Mr. Mayor, one correction. You read it as ordinance 4127-15 is dash 16. Okay. Is it's 16. Uh, okay, I see on the general ordinance that's what it's listed on my cheating copy. It had one five. Okay, one six. Right. Good. So uh, it was moved and seconded. No dis other discussion. Uh, Madam Clerk. Deputy Mayor Chase. Yes. Councilwoman Francois. Yes. Mayor Kramer. Yes. Councilman Oni Jaka. Yes. Councilman Prasad. Yes. Councilwoman Robinson. Yes. Councilwoman Sherman. Yes. Councilman Vassanella. Yes. Councilman Wright. Yes. Uh, item 14 is ordinances on introduction and first reading. We have none. Item 15 is the consent agenda resolutions. The items A through S as listed on the consent agenda portion of this meeting are presented to the Township Council for adoption. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Discussion or anyone wanting to pull one? Uh, seeing none. Madam Clerk. Deputy Mayor Chase. Yes. Councilwoman Francois. Yes. Mayor Kramer. Yes. Councilman Oni Jaka. Yes. Councilman Prasad. Yes. Councilwoman Robinson. Yes. Councilwoman Sherman. Yes. Councilman Vassanella. Yes. Councilman Wright. Yes. Item 16, resolutions to be voted on sec separately. Resolution 16-61, resolution of support authorizing the sustainable Jersey grant uh, application. Uh, resolution is hereby presented to Township Council for adoption. So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none. Yeah. Madam Clerk. Deputy Mayor Chase. Yes. Councilwoman Francois. Yes. 
Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Oni Chaka? Yes. Councilman Prasad? Yes. Councilwoman Robinson? Yes. Councilwoman Sherman? Yes. Councilman Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Thank you. Item number 17, old business. Um, 2016 boards, committees, commissions, council appointments, etc. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Councilwoman I would like to Prasad. nominate our, council, our newly elected uh, appointed Councilman Charles Onyujaka to the following committees. The Standing Committee Administration, Cable TV Advisory Committee, Council Liaison, Emergency Life Support Committee, Council Representative, Raritan and Millstone Flood Control Council, uh, Commission, and the Sewage Authority Council Liaison. Are there any other nominations for those positions? Not for that, but I do have another nomination. Do you want to, uh, can we, we do them all at once or? Sure. Why sure. not? Why not? So, um, as you know, we have an economic development uh, committee. It is at this point only ad hoc, but um, I would like to nominate our uh, mayor as the fourth member of that committee. Uh, I also, uh, just as an aside, want to let the, uh, suggest to the council the decision uh, that the committee made, which is to turn this into a standing committee, uh, and we will come forward with some other suggestions and uh, an ordinance to, to have that happen. So, but for now, uh, I'd like to have that nomination uh, put into play for uh, our mayor for the uh, ad hoc committee. Thank you, Councilman Sherman. Are there any other nominations for that position? Just for clarification, that has to be done by ordinance. Right, the we, have, we have an ordinance. The economic development yes. standing, committee. standing committee. The standing committee. Making right, it yes. a standing committee right. has to be done that by ordinance. That will be done by yeah, ordinance and off. that we will see in the future with a first reading and a second reading, but for the nomination um, for the ad hoc committee, that can be done uh, now. now. And we can do this according to the attorney by voice vote. So uh, all in favor, I hear, see no other nominations. All in favor of those nominations, uh, say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, the ayes have it. Um, item 18 is executive session. There is none. Uh, item 19, adjournment. Do we have a motion? Motion to adjourn. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Be well, Franklin.